Welcome to Redemption Power Church. We are so excited to have you here. Our live broadcast will begin in just a little bit. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in you as you invest in the kingdom. You can pay your tithe or give your offerings online at redemptionpowerchurch.org or on our Redemption Power Church app. If you're interested in starting or joining a Power Connect group, kindly send us a direct message. Stay tuned for a powerful message. Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. What a beautiful day. Even though it's raining out there, it feels so wonderful, incredible, amazing in here. And I am so glad today to have the New Life Recovery, some of the people in the house. Hey, Carla. Hey, Keith. Yes. Awesome ministry going on there. And uh, there's several of our people that are going to be speaking for them. And I'm always, always blessed when I see ministry working outside four walls. Amen. 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 You may be seated at this time. <clears throat> I want you to turn around and tell somebody within earshot, holler at them real loud. Say, God trained you in trouble. God trained you in trouble. Can I get an amen up in this house this morning? How many of you have been trained in trouble? I think I'm going to raise two hands. To, I'm going to raise one foot because I'll fall over, but I could raise more if I had it because I can tell you right now and I can testify God trains you in trouble, Amen. right? Yeah. It ain't fair, but it's the way it works, amen? On the job training, I love it. I always say this, God, you were an awesome multitasker, and he is. For those of you who are tuning in live via Facebook feed, we are so glad you are joining us today. I say it often. God is so big and so mighty that he is so good at knowing exactly where you are and what you need. And I believe that those of you tuning in and those of you in this house today, this is your word today. Amen. I said this is your word today. But you got to be ready to receive it. So I want you to clear everything out of your mind right now. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. And before I even go further, just say, God, just speak to me today because you see ahead of me. And you know exactly what I need to prepare me for the situation I'm about to walk into. Amen. But also how to walk out of one I'm already in. Can I get an amen in this house this morning? So the title today is, and this is my second part of the two-part series, This is a Kingdom Shakedown. Amen. So the title of today is Trained in Trouble. Trained in Trouble. I want you to know that God will put you in situations, hear me today, and things that will test you and temper you. He will expose you to various degrees of frustrating situations, and amen again on that. Then he's going to critique your response to that situation. Y'all know God tweaks you. Do you know that? Because he loves you so much, he's going to teach you and tweak you how to handle something. So even though you've gone through a test, he will test you again to see if you can get it right this time. Amen? Amen. The Bible says this, he has trained my hands for war. He has trained my hands for war. He has trained your hands for war. You know, and a lot of people that hear me counsel, I'll say this all the time, that you're being trained when you don't even know it. You remember the Karate Kid movies, some of you older people. I'm not older, I just know about them. But um, some of you old folk in here that remember Karate Kid knows that it was what? Wax on, wax off. And he kept saying, well, when does the training start? I want to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight. And he didn't understand that what he was doing seemed menial to him, but it was preparing his hands for war. What you do not see is that what you've been dealing with Wax on, wax off, baby. That it is preparing you, training your hands for war. Amen. Joshua 1 and 1 through 2. And I am reading out of the New Living Translation. And our screen is kind of on the blink right now. So uh, y'all just going to have to follow along. If you got your device, share right now. Go to Redemption Power Church, start a watch party. And those of you who want to can also watch on there and you'll see the scripture. So... Joshua 1, 1 through 2. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people 
the Israelites across the Jordan River and into the land I am giving them. Everybody say finally. finally. About time. Everybody say about time. We're talking about 40 years they walked in circles, people. 40 years. 40 years. But now Moses has died, and this was his predecessor to Joshua. So Joshua learned by serving. And even again, here we go, on the job training, amen? God has appointed Joshua to be the Israelites' new leader. And so the first task at hand is this. The first order of business is Joshua, as their new leader, is leading them into battle, to conquest, a conquest for the city of Jericho. And we already know Joshua's a great warrior. We know he's a great leader. Uh, he doesn't run from a fight. He is fearless. He is brave. He has already fought battles, and he has triumphed over the enemy. So Joshua has the war thing down pat, don't y'all think? Amen? Amen. But every battle you fight, hear me now, every battle you fight will be different than the one you fought before. Every battle requires a new strategy. Mm -hmm. So you can't do the same thing you did before to win. This is a new strategy, a new battle. Amen? God has given Joshua the strategy to win this specific battle. So even to a seasoned warrior, this may seem strange, you know, because Joshua's a warrior. He's in there to get in there and fight and face the enemy. But when God gives you the instructions, he's not going to do it your way, baby. He ain't going to ask you how you'd like to do it. He's not going to consult with you. The Bible says he consults with himself. In other words, you don't know nothing. Amen? You think you do. You might could tell him, you know, some of us women, we like to give some directives right there. But we can tell him how we'd like to have it played out. Amen, Chrissy? Amen. But God don't listen to us, and aren't you glad? Because it would be a hot mess if he did. So he told him, have your army march around the city walls one time a day. Then go home and rest. Go back to the camp. Go rest. He did this every day, and he said, don't let them speak a word. Tell them to be quiet. Tell somebody, hush, hush, hush. Don't talk about what it looks like. Oh, y'all hear me. Don't talk about what it looks like. Don't talk about what it sounds like. Don't talk about how impossible it feels or looks to you. The Bible says that God spoke to them specifically and said, tell them not to speak a word. But in front of them, the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, went before them. And they played trumpets. And they had music, but nobody, nobody opened their mouth. Nobody. They just followed. They were obedient. Sometimes you just have to be obedient and be quiet. Even if it seems strange, trust his strategy. Amen? So every day for six days, they got up and did the same thing over and over and over again until the seventh day. Now watch this. God switched it up on them. So they've been obedient, and it was crazy anyway, but now he switched it. Now here's the new directives. Now, Joshua, I want you to march around the city seven times on the seventh day and have everyone shout before the wall falls. How many of you have been waiting for your wall to, to fall before you give God a praise? Mm. Amen? See, anybody can shout after the walls fall. But what I want to ask you today is do you trust him enough to look at the wall of impossibility in front of you and shout anyway before it even comes down? Because you trust him like that. So many of you are looking at unmovable, impossible situations, but I want you to find your shout today. Tell your neighbors, say, find your shout. Shout before it happens, but shout like it already has. Amen? Because no matter what it looks like this morning, God is up to something big, even if you can't see it. And even if nothing changes, I'm telling you to go ahead and shout. I said, if your finances are still a mess, go ahead and shout anyway. Amen? If your marriage is a mess, go ahead and shout anyway. If your kids are a mess, go ahead. Y'all holler it. Shout anyway. Shout anyway. Shout as if the victory has already been won. Look at your neighbor right now and tell them. Say, ask them this question. Say, what are you shouting for? You still have problems? Amen? 
Now I want you to answer your neighbor back and tell them I'm about to shout anyway because something's breaking. Something's breaking right now. Amen. I might not can see it, but if I be real still and real quiet, I can feel the earth shake under my feet. And I know God is about to take some things and move them out of my way. Amen. Put your hands together this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Joshua 5, 13 through 15 says this. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, the Jordan's behind him. You know, he said, go ahead and y'all cross over the Jordan. And it was the town of Jericho in front of him. And he looked up. Now, I want you to visualize this. He looked up and he saw a man. This is what the word of God says. He saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in his hand. Joshua ran up to him is the way another translation, translation says it. This one says, Joshua went up to him and demanded, are you friend or are you foe? Are you friend or are you foe? And he replied, neither one. Neither one. I'm the commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I am at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals. Take off your shoes. For the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did as he was told. Now let me, let me show you something. Joshua is standing on a battlefield. There's nothing holy about a battlefield that I would see, right? Would you say that if you're standing on a battlefield? And I can see Joshua right now. He's gearing up. He's got it in his head. He's in the zone. Y'all know. Y'all watch, watch the boxing matches. You know what I mean. They get hyped. They get psyched up before they ever walk out there and take the first punch. They psych themselves up because they got to get in the zone, Pastor Moses. Am I right? Got to get in the zone. So I want you to see Joshua right here. He is in the zone. He's got it mentally. He's pacing. He's saying, okay, I'm ready. We're going to kick some enemies, butt tomorrow I'm going to do it. God, it don't make sense, but I'm going to march. I don't, I don't make sense, but I'm going to be obedient. He's psyching himself up saying, I know they're going to laugh at us. I know they're going to mock us because this don't look like war. I said, this don't look like war. This don't look like I'm defeating the enemy at all. I don't even think this is going to intimidate them, Bella. But he is psyching himself up. He is in the warrior zone, ready to go to war and fight for his promise. He looks up and he sees a man, who he thinks is a man, standing in front of him. With a sword drawn. That right there would concern me. If I'm in the zone, I can see how Joshua just ran up, you know, adrenaline pumping and saying, Whose side are you on? Are you my friend or are you my foe? Because I'm fixing it. It's going to go down right here. Right here. Sword in your hand, it don't even matter. I could take you down right now. But Joshua runs up to who he thinks is just a man. But this wasn't a man at all. It was the angel of the Lord. Joshua is saying, whose side are you on? And his reply is, neither. Joshua assumes he is running into a man, but really he is running into God. How many of you have been running into things that you thought was just flesh? You thought was just something in your way, and you didn't realize that you are running into God, into his plan, into his purpose. I want you to pay attention to something here. God has already given them the land, right? It's called the promise, the promised land, the promise. That means it's a done deal, amen? So God's already given them the land, but he told him, now you got to go fight for your promise. See, many of you have been given a word, and you have let it go because you have said it's been so long. Maybe I heard you wrong, God, but he said, no, this is the promise, and it will come to pass. Why? Because God cannot lie. I said, he ain't like you. He ain't like your, your children. He ain't like your mama, your auntie, or whoever. He cannot lie. He is truth. There is no lie in him. Amen? 
but you're going to have to fight for it. But every place you put your foot, the same promise he told Abraham, I will go with you. You will not walk into the battle alone. You will claim territory, but it's going to be in my footprints because I'm going to walk in front of you. Don't worry. Don't fear. Be brave. He says this over and over in the book of Joshua. Be brave. Be of good courage. Many times we don't discern God is involved in our battles. To not discern that he is involved in this process can be a crippling mistake. Because like Joshua, Joshua, he will see if you trust him enough to be obedient, even if it doesn't make sense. And if you are not careful, you can be so practical-minded, some of you, so analytical, dealing with the problem that you don't recognize God is already at work in your situation. You need to just get out of his way. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, get out of his way. I want to operate, me personally, I want to operate from a position of strength, not strain. Can anybody in here relate this morning? Now, what do I mean by that? Because some of you are fighting a battle right now that you've been stressing over. And you're fighting from a position of strain because you believe it's going to be won by your strength. But it is in his strength you will win the battle. Amen. Tell somebody it's not your battle. It's the Lord's. It's the Lord's. Tell somebody else they quit straining. Quit straining. Amen. You're not going to beat this devil with what you can do. The enemy is not impressed with your skill. He's not impressed with the way you wield a sword. It does not intimidate him at all. Amen. There is a spiritual dynamic to winning. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says this in the Passion Translation. For we live by faith, not by what we see with our eyes. For we live by faith, not by what we see with our eyes. You can't fight a spiritual battle and win by going by what you see with your eyes, you will never, ever win a spiritual war with natural tactics. Spiritual battles can only be fought and won in the spirit. And I'm not saying pray 24 hours a day. It's okay if you do. I'm not saying be so spiritual minded you are of no worldly good. Um, it's true. Faith without works is dead. But it's also true. Works without faith is dead. So you have to face something difficult. Hear me today. You have to face something difficult, something impossible to accomplish by your own strength, something that makes you feel vulnerable and insecure to grow in your faith. Many of you have let your past experiences shape how you see your present. Your past does not shape your present. It does shape your perspective about your present situation. He is wanting to take you into a new area of growth so you can experience him, so you can meet him, so you can be introduced to the God you thought you knew, but in a greater way. Think about this. Joshua ran up to the Lord, and he asked the angel of the Lord, Are you with me or are you against me? And the reply was neither. When in fact, hear me today, in fact, it's not about God being for you. It's about you being for God. And y'all can hashtag tweet that one out right there. In fact, it's not about God being for you. It's about you being for God. Many of you have tried to assign God a post in your army, a place in your agenda. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But your prayers sound more like a marching order. Come on now. Then, you know, you're giving directives. Lord, here's what I need you to do and how I want you to do it. Amen. But I want to remind you today, the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. It belongs to God. That doesn't mean you don't have to show up for the fight. It means ultimately the victory that you seek. Mm. My God, the victory that you seek is not your victory at all. Think about that. It's his victory. It doesn't even belong to you. When you get victory, it's about God getting the victory through you to show how great and mighty he is. 
and you're not using God to get your victory. He's using you to get his victory. Tell somebody right now. Tell somebody. Say, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. It ain't your victory, baby. Don't get it twisted. The moment you get it twisted, the moment you get it confused, you become God over the battle. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be God over my battle. I think even if it sounds crazy, I'm going to listen to what he tells me to do, and I'm going to be obedient because I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to die on the battlefield by being arrogant, prideful, or thinking I know more than God, amen, or my ways are better than his. His ways are higher than our ways. So you start trying to manipulate everything, the whole circumstance, trying to ensure the outcome you think is best. You wrote your battle plan with your pre preconceived idea of how to get victory. Be careful, your idea of victory may not be victory at all. Amen? You might be walking into an ambush, but it feels good to you. Amen? You need to understand this battle is not yours. Tell somebody, say it ain't your battle. It ain't your battle. You can run against the enemy. You cannot, you cannot run against the enemy before you run into God. There's an order of battle. Amen? Like Joshua, you need to have an encounter with God before you go up against a Jericho. And I could tell you, I can always tell when I need to spend more time and run to God because people start getting on my last nerves. I ain't calling none of y'all's names. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about people that are, I, you know, y'all don't know them. Y'all don't know them. Don't worry. You don't know them. I know that means I need to put my focus more on him. I need to make my, my prayer time more of a priority. I need to make my time that I spend in his presence more of a priority, not an afterthought. I need to make time for him first. First. I need to get my spiritual center back. Amen? Amen. I can't blame nobody but me for the distance between me and God. You can't blame nobody but you for the distance between you and God. Why? Because it's on you. It's on me. He said, draw close to me, and I will draw close to you. But if you're pulling away from him, he's not going to chase after you. See, I know there was a book a years back called God Chasers. You must draw close to him. You must run after him. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's up to you to close the gap. Those of you who showed up today, I believe this, you know that you want and you need to encounter God. Amen? Because you also understand the battle that you're going to face this week, the battle you're going to face tomorrow, the battle you're going to face next month, it depends on the strategy you receive today. Because God is like that. He sees ahead of us, and he's already waiting there, but he's going to tell you how to win and overcome the battle you got to walk through this battlefield. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, I had to be here today. I, I'll never see the walls of my Jericho come down unless I encounter God. I'll never see my worry come down. I'll never see my debt come down. I'll never see my fear come down unless I have an encounter with God. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings in here, but I'll tell you, I didn't show up today to encounter you. I showed up today to encounter him. Amen? Because I know I have to have him. See, I can't make it through Monday if I don't have God. I can't even make it through the rest of today if I don't have a face-to-face -face encounter with him through word through music, through worship. That's why it, it bothers me. Can I just tell y'all right here? It bothers me if there is people up here worshiping. They're here to lead you. Judah leads, right? But if you're back there twiddling your thumbs or you're just off in la-la land, you have no idea the music went before them. The worship goes before you in battle. And if you're standing back and you're just being a, uh, not a participator, but a spectator, and you're sitting there watching people worship, 
but you think it's all about you being entertained or them singing the song you want to hear, you have no idea because you're trying to take the worship that don't even belong to you. Worship ain't about you. I said worship ain't about how you feel. Worship is all about what pleases the Father. And it don't matter. It don't matter if somebody sings off key. It don't matter if the overhead's not working. Can you close your eyes? Can you get in the presence of God without having your flesh tickled? Can you walk into the presence of God and understand it don't matter what you're going through? See, some of you carried the weight of a battle in this place today. Some of you watching are holding on to the weight of a battle. All of the armor, you got it, but you don't even know how to use it. Some of you walked in here already with a mentality of being defeated. Because you're going by what you feel. You're going by the heaviness upon you. You don't understand the power that's in your praise. I said, you don't understand the power in your praise. It's funny, they walked around six days with the music playing. The music playing. I believe inside their mind, they were singing worship. They were singing worship. They were already fighting in their mind because they're being obedient. On the seventh day, he said, okay, now everybody blow the trumpet. Everybody shout. Everybody collectively shout and the walls fell and the walls fell amen some of you are waiting for a sign holding your praise back hostage thinking that you're going to blackmail God and I'll give you a praise if I see it working out some of you don't know how to praise him unless it's praising him for what he did for you and you don't understand you are created to worship I don't want a rock singing for me I want to tell him I love him with my own voice. I want to worship him with my own voice. Amen. 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 And you walk and you keep marching around the same wall. Like Moses, you go round and round and round a mountain. Round in circles. Thinking you're going nowhere. Not understanding that it's about time, baby. You're real close, baby. That promise is almost here, baby. Come on, walk a little more. Come on, walk a little further. Come on, push. The, I know your feet are hurting. Come on, walk a little further. Be quiet. Don't talk about how it looks. Be quiet. Don't talk about how it feels. Just keep walking. Just keep moving. And then you won't have to lift a finger, only a shout. Only a shout, and the walls are going to fall down. Amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a praise. Woo, yes, Lord. Woo, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For those of you watching, excuse me, because sometimes I have to walk in the Spirit. Because Paul said, I pray all the time in the Spirit, more than any of you. It ain't that kind of competition, but let me tell you, if it's good for Paul, it must be good for you. That's somebody that went to prison and they could not shut up his praise. He still opened up his mouth. He still gave him a praise. And what happened? The prison doors opened. He didn't lift a finger. He didn't talk about they were fixing to put him to death. He didn't talk about how weary he was, how hungry he was, how his back was bleeding from the beating he just got. All he did is praise. But can you praise? Are you so selfish, so selfish that you think your praise has got to be held back till you feel good, till God performs and then you're like, yay, Jesus. You so good. You good, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that. I appreciate it. That's not praise at all. That is not praise at all. Praise is when you are walking through hell. And you don't feel like praising. There ain't nothing you can praise God for. But you reach deep down inside of you. And somewhere, somewhere, you pull out a praise. Because you know you cannot survive it if he don't come through for you. 
You know you're not going to live through it if he don't make a way. So you praise him because you ain't got no choice. You praise him because you ain't got nothing left but tears. You praise him because you cried every night and there ain't no water left in your face. You praise him because he is God and God alone. And where men say it is impossible, God walks out onto the stage and he says, Watch me tear down this wall because you have shouted and given me the praise. And because you know I am able. And because you trust me and you trust the way I'm going to do it, even if it don't make sense. Quit trying to analyze God. Your brain ain't that big, baby. It ain't that big. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I want you to tell somebody that you're, you're standing up. Some of y'all turn around and sit down and tell them, turn around, holler at somebody right now, say, I needed this word today. I needed this word today. That's my word. You can't have it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine, devil. You can't even take it today. Say, not today, not today, not today. Praise God, my spirit needed this encounter. Thank you, Jesus. My flesh didn't want to be here. But God, you knew I needed to be here. Amen? Amen? My spirit knew I had to be here today. I had to encounter you today, God. See, I don't want to just come to church and hear a word. I need to hear a word that goes from me. I need to hear the word for my circumstance, for my situation. Amen? The angel of the Lord says to Joshua, take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Take off your preconceived ideas, Joshua. Kick them off. Kick them to the side. Take off your shoes of how you think the battle's going to go down. Take off your shoes about how you fought in the past and won. This ain't that battle, baby. What you did last week ain't going to work this week. Joshua fell down. He fell down. And he began to worship. He began to worship. Because he no longer saw the battlefield as just a battlefield. He saw it as holy ground. Holy ground. Take off your shoes. The place where you were standing is holy. Some of you don't even understand. Battles are made with sacrifice. Yeah, you'll bleed. You're going to bleed. You might get cut. A little bit or a lot. But, but... God is so faithful. He is so faithful that even today you crawled yourself up in here thinking, God, if you don't speak to me today, I can't get through this. This has been going on. Now, this ain't no one-night little test. This ain't no two-week test. This has been a season, God. And I'm like the woman who is now I'm bowed over. I'm bent over because I'm weary. I'm bent over because I'm tired. I'm bent over because I walked and I walked and I walked some more. And still I don't see a change. I am bowed over because I can't stand up on my own anymore. God, hold me up right Hold me upright. Joshua was not standing in a cathedral. He was not standing in a temple. He was not in Bible class. He was not in Sunday morning church. But he took his shoes off because he understood he was still standing in the presence of the almighty God. Look who's standing with you. You thought you were standing alone because you feel alone. Look who's standing with you, Rose. You're not by yourself. Oh, no, you're not by yourself. Mm-mm. Chrissy, you're not by yourself. Uh-uh. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what the enemy lied to you. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. He's got you, and he's got this. I said, he's got you. Amen? What made it holy ground was who was standing with him. The ground wasn't holy because Joshua had showed up. The ground was holy because God showed up. He's been there the whole time. And you're so caught off and thrown off by what you see and by the lies that the enemy is messing with your mind about and the pictures and the movies he's put together just for you to play how it's going to turn out. And he always shows you being the loser, don't he? 
He always shows you looking crazy. He always shows you being defeated. But the devil is a liar. I said, he's a liar. Why? Because who is standing with you on the battle? Who is standing with you on the battlefield? Quit talking about who's not there. I said, quit talking about who's not there. I want you to focus on the God that's standing with you. The God of angel armies is standing with you. He is above you, below you, behind you, around you, through you, in you, any way you want to go, any direction. God has got you. You are not alone. You are not alone. The tide of battle turns from defeat to victory. When you begin to see your battlefield as a sanctuary and you begin to worship God because you know he is fighting your battle things change that you can't change when you begin to worship God in the midst of your grief in the midst of your mess in the midst of the doctor's office when you just got the report in the midst of your situation things change when you worship In the midst of your upheaval, in the midst of your storm, when you make a sanctuary out of a situation by giving God praise in the middle of it, God is going to give you a strategy from heaven. I said, God is going to work it for your good. I want you to stand to your feet right now all over this place. Amen. Whoo, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my God. God's about to show up in the battle you are fighting. I need you to tell your neighbor, say, God's showing up for you right now. God is showing up for you right now. You've been wondering where he is, but God is showing up right now. Tell somebody, say, and your Jericho is falling. Your Jericho is falling right now. Who, Jesus. If you believe that, I want you to give a shout. I said, I want you to give a shout. Hallelujah. This test is about to become a testimony. I see your test is about to become a testimony. Praise God. I see you later. You're going to be sitting there and your children, your grandchildren may be going through the same thing and you're going to go, oh, wait a minute, baby. I know it looks impossible, but let me tell you, back in the summer of 2020, I went through it, but I gave God a praise anyway, and I survived. Amen? You didn't think you were going to survive it? You don't feel like you're going to survive it? But you got it because God's got you. God's got you. Amen. Tell your neighbors, say this battle didn't come to last. Whoo, this battle came to pass. This battle came to pass. Tell your other neighbors, say, so it's time to stop worrying. Stop worrying. Be quiet. Hush. Tell somebody, hush about it. Hush about it. Stop talking about it. It's time to worship I said it's time to get your harp off the willow and worship. It's time to worship. Thank you, Father. And then watch him do what you have never seen him done. Watch every wall that you are looking at fall down just like that. Because God don't need 30 days. He can do it in a second. Amen? Amen? Put your hands together for him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm about to open the front of this place for worship. Uh, Those of you who are here that need a word today, you needed to hear from God today. I want you to make sure you make your way to the front of this. But before we do any of that, if you are here and you are away from God, If you are here and you've been running the opposite direction, if you are here and you feel like you blew it, if you are watching and you feel like you have blown it, you're a disappointment to God because all you do is mess up. You keep going straight, then you fall back into addiction. You keep going straight, then you go back to that person. You keep going straight, God pulls you out, and you go right back. If I'm talking to you today, 
I want you to know you can't do anything without his grace and his mercy. And, and Christianity is not about performance. It is about his blood covers you. He paid the price so you don't have to. When you understand you are a child of the Most High, it doesn't matter who abandoned you. It doesn't matter who didn't see you were worth loving. He loves you so much he gave every single thing for you because you are that valuable. You are that important. And if I'm speaking to you right now, and if you're lost and it's time to come home, you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you in. You feel the voice of your father whispering to you, come home, child. Come home, child. Prayers for many years have now caught up with you and wrapped their arms of love and mercy around your shoulders. And as they hold you tight, I want you to just pray this. Close your eyes. Everybody in this house, if you are here, raise your hand. If you are away from God, if you are lost, I want to lead you in a sinner's prayer today. Pray this prayer with me, those of you watching. Father, I come to you. I give you my past. I give you my future. And Lord, forgive me of every sin. Forgive me of every sin I've committed, God, that I have failed you. I've been away from you. Forgive me, Father, for causing pain. Lord, help me to become someone who becomes a healer, God. Cover me with your grace. Cover me with your mercy. Baptize me with fire today, Father. As I follow my face and humble myself before you, O oh God, and say I cannot save myself, Lord, I need you. I need you. I've been living my life without you, but I need you. I've been walking through a battle without you, but God, I need you. I need you, Father. And I want you just to run to the arms of the Father this morning. Today, run to the arms of your Father. He is waiting for you with open arms. And as you come forth, I want you to know all of heaven is throwing a party for you. All of heaven because you're that important. Yes, you, you are that important to God. And you were important to us. And if you prayed that prayer, reach out to us so that we can connect you. It is important. And I know COVID has disconnected so many people. But hear me, hear me, hear me. For you to grow in grace. For you to grow in understanding and knowledge of who he is. If you don't know who he is and you're his child, you don't know who you are. And that means you're going to keep going back to a hog pen over and over and over again because you don't know who you are. Reach out to us and we can connect you. We can connect you with Bible studies. We can connect you with a body. Don't stay isolated. Isolation is the worst thing you can do because depression comes. There is something that, that happens that is super spiritual. When you get together with the body and you come together in synergy and in one accord and in one mind, and we're all in this place to worship him together, together to worship him, to receive a word, and there is healing that comes through that. Thank you for joining us today. Share this feed, share this word to encourage someone. Someone needs to hear it today, and we'll see you back here Sunday. God bless you. Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today to Redemption Power Church in Monroe, Louisiana. If you were blessed today by this service and by this feed, I want you to share the feed, but also reach out to us. We want to know that you were blessed today and how God moved in your life. We believe in prayer. We believe that God sees you. He hears you right where you are. And we know that God is doing some awesome things. If you have prayed the prayer of salvation today, Please let us know so that we can send you some vital information to help you grow and mature in the Lord and in your walk with the Lord. So thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for being faithful in His tithe and your offering during this time. Thank you for giving and continuing to give, even those of you who are being blessed via live stream. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. It is by your love and your commitment to giving that we are able to reach and do the things that we do in ministry, which is like working with the homeless. And we just thank you so much again for being faithful.